Yeah, you. My name is Christopher Millette, and we're going to be reviewing David Callahan's book, The Cheating Culture. Are you ready? Great! Let's get started. So we will begin discussing the author himself, David Callahan. Then we will examine his book, The Cheating Culture, Why More Americans Are Doing Wrong to Get Ahead. His book demonstrates how cheating has invested American life and thus has become part of mainstream society. People who cheat and their behavior can be explained by Robert K. Merton's strain theory. So we will elaborate on his strain theory, which states that social structure and pressurized societal goals causes deviance and crime. We will then conclude and finish by connecting both of these concepts to each other. David Callahan has written several books on American history, business, and public policy. In 1999, he co-founded the public policy center Demos. Demos combines research and advocacy in order to strengthen democracy in the United States. In addition, Demos attempts to expand economic opportunities throughout the United States. Just five years later, in 2004, he released his book, The Cheating Culture, Why More Americans Are Doing Wrong to Get Ahead. Callahan reports that cheating is a part of the American society now, and that the cheating norm is a sign of a cultural moral rot in America. Callahan engaged in thorough and extensive research to support his beliefs. He draws his conclusions from newspaper articles, industry reports, government reports, interviews, studies by social scientists, public opinion polls, nationwide surveys, journalistic investigations of scandals, and of course, actual cheating incidents. Well, if there is a cheating culture, who exactly cheats in this cheating culture? Throughout his book, Callahan expands on various people and types of people that cheat. All of these individuals and or groups come from various backgrounds. Callahan goes on to define cheating as the breaking the rules to get ahead academically, professionally, or financially. He saw a variety of cheating methods conducted by professional athletes, reporters and journalists, medical professionals, academics, fanatics, employees, professionals, and so many more people. Example of ways that these people cheated include, and are not limited to, using performance enhancing steroids, disguising fiction as journalism, promoting questionable drugs in exchange for payments from pharmaceutical companies, cheating on exams, submitting plagiarized work, downloading and selling entertainment media, stealing, and even corporate crime. There are a few major themes that are presented in Callahan's book. The first one is that not only are more Americans engaging in cheating behaviors, but people are also feeling less guilty about it, according to Callahan. Callahan states that this can be a direct result from several developments that have occurred over the past quarter century. Developments including increased materialism, media depictions of extreme wealth, increased job insecurity that pressure companies' employees to do whatever they can to succeed, lower risks of being caught and punished for wrongdoing, and of course, increased selfishness. The second theme that is presented is that Americans have developed two moral compasses, according to Callahan. One compass influences our behavior when it comes to things like sex, family, and drugs, and traditional forms of crime. However, a new second compass provides questionable ethical guidance for decisions regarding career, money, and success. Regardless, both of these compasses influences an individual's behavior. However, the individual does have the agency to choose how these compasses may impact their behavior. It is clear that the cheating behavior are more likely to occur due to the second compass because it allows the individual to participate in activities that could lead to them breaking the rules. People who break the rules and cheat in order to become a so-called winner and get farther ahead in life. Lastly, a third theme is how Callahan addresses what is known as the cheating effect. He, along with other various academic dishonesty experts, state that people rationalize the need to cheat by stating that everybody does it. Individuals justify their dishonesty and their cheating behavior because they see their actions as a way to get ahead. Closer to the end of his book, David Callahan elaborates on multiple proposals that should be established. In order to solve and reduce cheating behaviors in America, Callahan believes that a new social contract should be implemented. This social contract would state that anyone who plays by the rules can get ahead. Also, the contract would state that anyone who breaks the rules should endure consequences. 
Besides the contract, he would also like government agencies to enforce these rules of fair play. Thirdly, it would be just as important to install and teach the value and meaning of integrity. This will cause a higher level of ethical standards in the professional world and a higher emphasis on honor codes in educational institutions. All of these changes may allow a return for what is known as civic mindedness. According to Callahan, civic mindedness is where individuals sense that they are all in the same boat and can work together to create a better and more just society. Robert K. Merton was an American sociologist at Columbia University. He was a colleague of George E. Simpson and is considered the founding father of modern sociology. Merton's most well-known piece of work is his theory commonly known today as strain theory. Merton created this theory by borrowing the concepts of anime theory developed by Emily Durkheim in 1893. Merton's strain theory states that social structures within a society may pressure citizens to become deviant and commit crime. Merton defines the social structure as the organized set of social relationships in which members of society or groups are variously implicated. His theory states that society places pressure on individuals to achieve socially accepted goals, such as the American dream. This often occurs through a lack of means though, which leads to an individual committing crime in order to achieve the so-called socially accepted goal. As a part of his theory, Merton developed five modes of adaptation of strain, which are caused by the restricted access to the socially approved goals and means. The five modes are conformity, innovation, ritualism, retreatism, and rebellion. Conformity refers to the attainment of societal goals by socially accepted means, while innovation refers to the attainment of those societal goals in unacceptable ways, such as crime and deviance. Merton states that ritualism is the acceptance of the means, but the individual forfeits the goals. On the other hand, retreatism is the rejection of both the means and the goals, and thus the individual is seen as deviant. Lastly, rebellion is similar to retreatism where individuals reject both existing societal goals and means, but unlike retreaters, rebels work to replace those existing societal goals and means with their own new substituting goals and means. Now, connecting the cheating culture and strain theory to each other, there is definitely a similarity between Callahan's book and Merton's theory and how they elaborate on how individuals or groups may be pressurized to attain societal goals. Thus, they cheat in order to get ahead in life and achieve these societal goals. Callahan states that people who do cheat view themselves as upstanding members of society. This is ironic considering these members of society participate in taboo and sometimes even illegal behaviors. Since many society members do not have the same access to the same resources as their fellow Americans, individuals cheat and commit crime in order to achieve their academic, professional, or financial goals. Merton's five modes of adaptation or strain can be directly applied to Callahan's cheating epidemic. Americans who cheat may fall under Merton's innovation adaptation mode. This is because innovators achieve societal goals, but in unacceptable ways, such as cheating. Innovators reject the societal means of achieving their goals, like working hard and becoming successful in an honest manner. All Americans subscribe to goals, however, individuals make choices and rationalize their choices in order to become a so-called winner and to get ahead. So in closing, we discussed the author himself, David Callahan. Then we examined his book, The Cheating Culture, Why More Americans Are Doing Wrong to Get Ahead. David Callahan believes that there has been a recent cheating epidemic in American societies. Cheating has become part of a citizen's norm in order to get ahead and be successful. And this new behavior can be explained by Robert Merton's strengths theory, which states that social structure and pressurized societal goals causes crime. Thus, these individuals or groups resort to cheating in order to achieve their academic, professional, or financial goals and to get further ahead in life. Thank you for listening to my presentation on David Callahan's book, The Cheating Culture and Robert Merton's Strain Theory. I hope you have a great day.